What really happened when a fire broke out in 1979 at Luna Park on the ghost train? Ooh. At around 10.15pm on the 9th of June 1979, a fire broke out on the ghost train at Luna Park in Sydney, Australia. Ooh. Ouch. The fire would ultimately claim seven lives, wiping out almost an entire family in the process. It was a devastating blaze, the true cause of which remains, to this day, unknown. Okay, I thought this wasn't actually going to involve any loss of life. I take back the ooh. Um, yeah, that's that's incredible that something that like this that hasn't actually been resolved really, has it? That's uh, crazy, especially with modern day techniques that can be used even for back then. The ride itself was fairly old at the time of the disaster. It started life in 1931 as a dark ride at Luna Park Glenelg. At the time, rides of this type were known as pretzel rides, so called because the track twisted and turned extremely tightly within the confines of the ride building. It wasn't until 1937 that the attraction was given a ghostly makeover and reopened as the ghost ride. Metal cars seated two riders each and after being pushed from the station by a ride attendant, followed the preset track through a series of darkened rooms filled with spooky animatronics, creepy music, and special effects. While the interior of the ride had been rethemed and revised constantly over the years, the track layout had remained unchanged since 1936. The ride was still as twisting, turning, and confusing as it had been back when it was a pretzel dark ride. I do have to say, uh we went here, when we came to Melbourne, we went here, uh, Sydney, sorry, when we went to Sydney, we went to Luna Park, we did go to the one in Melbourne as well, but it was too late and we couldn't get in. But I, we parked, hang on, if you follow the mouse on the screen, we parked literally on this corner here, just to the right of this, this pool. It's just amazing to see places that we've actually been. <laughs> Unfortunately, the fire suppression systems, which had been retrofitted into the ancient ride, were also somewhat out of date and dismally insufficient to smother the blaze that began on that fateful evening in 1979. There were approximately 35 people on board when the fire began. The first indication staff had that something was amiss was when smoke began pouring from the entrance and exit tunnels of the ride. Rather than stop the ride and try to evacuate guests through the complicated and confusing interior corridors, they left it running, and instead focused their energies on getting guests out of their cars and away from the ride as soon as they emerged from the tunnel. The fire service attended, but by the time they arrived, the fire had already taken hold. Their efforts to extinguish it were further hampered by low water pressure within the park, leading them to eventually draw water from the harbour to fight the flames. Within an hour, the entire ride building was consumed, collapsing into a pile of twisted wreckage. I'm going to make an early prediction. Now, this building was clearly quite old and therefore possibly the electronics are quite outdated and possibly not exactly up to um, safety, the safety that is needed. Now, obviously, this is in 1979, so I'm, I'm thinking back then, even then, it, you know, it, can o it only takes a small spark to light a fire. And I, that's going to be my thoughts on why it started. Maybe there was just a, a loose cable or, or a break in a cable and it sparked and it all went peak tong. It was thought Ooh, initially wow. that all riders had been evacuated safely, but at around 11.30pm, seven bodies were discovered. They were so badly burned that investigators at first assumed them to be animatronics from the ride's theming. The bodies included those of a father and his two children. John Godson had been visiting Luna Park with his wife and kids. The ghost train was their final ride of the day, and one that his wife declined to join them on. Oh no! <sighs> always, it's always the wrong time, isn't it? The wrong time, the wrong place. And the fact that his wife and the mother had didn't want to go on, you know, Imagine if they thought, okay, no, we are, okay, we won't bother going on. Or or imagine if they all went on and just, 
split seconds in timing, you know, and and just slightly different choices throughout the day. It's that almost, it's that, I don't know if it would be like the butterfly effect type thing where you do one thing and it affects other, I don't know, but oh, it's horrible. Those split second things that you could have done differently and things would have ended up so different. Oh, that's awful. Instead of riding the ghost train, she went to get an ice cream and agreed to meet them at the exit of the ride. This decision might very well have saved her life, but left her as the only surviving member of her family. The other victims were four schoolchildren from nearby Waverley Boys College, Jonathan Billings, Richard Carroll, Michael Johnson, and Seamus Rahali, all just 12 or 13 years old at the time. It is speculated that, when the fire broke out, the seven victims left their cars and attempted to escape the building on foot. In the dark, confined, smoke-filled passageways of the ghost train, they lost their way and succumbed to the smoke. Although we cannot be certain, there is a chance that had they remained within their cars, they may have survived the blaze. The cause of the fire itself was never established, although in later years, Abe Saffron, a notorious member of the Sydney underworld, was linked to the fire. His niece told authorities that he had started the fire as part of a plot to take control of Luna Park's lease, what? although he had never intended for anyone to die. Abe Saffron, of course, denied all involvement, and nothing was ever proven. The victims of the fire are now memorialised by a small plaque on the external wall of the Big Top Arena, which stands on the one-time site of the ghost train. Luna Park continues to operate as ever it did, visited by millions each year. Wow, that's sad. That's really sad. Now, who knows why the fire started, whether it was it was what I thought, maybe a loose wire and an old wiring, uh, whether it was this this underlord type character that, that wanted to take control of Luna Park. But once again, you got to feel sorry for the, the wife who has now basically lost her family and, and obviously the parents of the children are also passed. How things can always be so different in a matter of a few choices, one choice. You know, you don't go on that ride. You will, your life would have been, well, you would have still had a life and, and, oh man, uh, that's really awful. Uh, well, the journey continues. Thank you so much for watching. Please do make sure you like and subscribe and I'll catch you next time.